we have got a really lovely conversation for you today because I'm here with two very special friends of mine. First of all, the gorgeous Danielle Matthews, who many of you might have seen me in conversation with before on my channel, and a new guest, my lovely friend, Namala, um, Namala Krishman. Now, Namala's in Australia, Danielle's in America, and I'm in the UK. And we all connected through our beautiful connection through the ASEA. And we've realized we've got so much in common and so many interesting things to talk about and so much overlap between our passions at work that we wanted to bring this conversation for you today. And um, I really appreciate Namala being up very late, Danielle being up very early to be able to have this conversation together. So thank you for joining us, ladies. Um, let's just introduce ourselves to the audience because people might not have met Namala before and Danielle, they might not have met you. So Danielle, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and your work? Sure, yeah. Um, so I, I've been working with the SIA technology for the last eight years. Uh, it's something that turned my life around. I was in a severe car accident and that just it took my life on a very different track and it opened me up to a whole different world. <laughs> Started realizing you know, who I really was and who I wasn't. And uh, the technology allowed my body to recover. And so I've been educating and sharing it with people. And it's amazing, just as you said, it's like this space that I kind of started moving into, it started to attract all sorts of incredible people into my world. And um, really actually I have to thank COVID because COVID caused me to have to move everything online and started connecting with people through social media. And that's how Nirmala and I got connected. And Catherine, you and I originally also got connected in that way. And um, it's just been so beautiful. And so with Nirmala, I just have to share how we met because I, I reached out to her because I was interested. Her, her profile just intrigued me. She was talk, talking about quantum healing. And I thought, okay, and sacred geometry. And I thought, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> and uh, we got on a Zoom. And it was incredible because here I thought I was coming on to, you know, share about ASEA and Redox and all these beautiful things. And she gets on and she just, she took the conversation and she started asking me about it. Like she tapped into what it was. She started asking me about, well, why is it run by this family? And why am I sensing this and that? And I see that doing this in the body. And I was just, I mean, I just sat back in complete awe of her abilities and her conscious level of awareness. And after that, I went, I want to do a session with you. I need to learn more about what it is that you do. And I mean, ever since then, I think Nirmal and I probably talk at least once a week. Uh, and we've just built a beautiful friendship and we've never even met in person. We were laughing the other day because I said, I don't even know how tall you are. Yeah. <laughs> I know this much of you. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited, Catherine, that you've gotten to meet Nirmala, that you all connected and uh, for everyone to hear you know, about her gifts and, and insights in this world. And before I let Namala introduce herself, I've just got to add to that because Danielle introduced me to Namala and exactly the same thing happened. I was so blown away by initial conversation and um, the amazing ability Namala's got to pick up. We're going to have such a fascinating conversation today about sacred geometry and how it fits into everything that people are exploring about themselves at the moment. But Namala, you are a very special person. So tell our audience a little bit about yourself and your work. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words, ladies, um, Catherine and Danielle. Um, you're always very kind the way you <laughs> the way you described me. Now, um, sacred geometry is not something that is um, that's something separate to 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 us. Sacred geometry is us, right? So we are the formation of sacred geometry. Every alignment in our physical body, the way we look, the way we are chatting, is all got to do with the characters and the symbolism that we carry within the sacred geometry. Right. So the same way that I met um, Danielle uh, um, um, through Messenger, she texted me and I, and, and I went in and the first thing I saw is uh, the sacred geometry. She's so aligned with the icosohedron. Sorry, I'm going to use a lot of geometry terms here. When I say icosohedron, it's, it's a geometry shape icosahedron so it is a it is a shape of the water okay so when we say icosahedron um, it's always water so that's the question I asked her why is that blue water bottle I'm seeing around you is something in a water and she she laughed and she I remember she brought the bottle out and we started talking about it now the interesting thing about this here is that um 
um, it's not so much about the product. I don't, I don't get influenced by people that easily because everything has to connect to me geometrically. That's what I see. Every individual I see is a geometrical connection. Everyone has got a geometrical personality. Just by looking at that, I understand what has happened to them in the past or what is happening to them in the future because that geometry is kind of in communication with me. So um, it's just that everybody has these um, abilities, but in a different level. Um, some of them are intuitive by sensing, by touching, um, you know, um, in different levels of where they, they work with humans, um, in, in connecting with humans. So my work has, since a child has been with geometry. So um, just going back to the topic, how I met Daniel, um, even when she was talking about the um, ACM, um, I already connected to it. She didn't have to say anything. I wanted to try it basically because um, the, the source of that uh, water was very unique. For me, um, yes, everybody can do um, uh, bring in some sort of product in. They can they can bring in something to do with quantum level of um, resonance into light and water. But this was very specific because I find that um, the water was created by accident. That's the first thing I uh, I told her. The water was created by accident. Nobody intended that water to be in that in that formation or in that uh, resonance. And she said you have, that I was absolutely right. So that's where um, I really went deeper into understanding. And I love in my practice to use quantum tools and I enjoy having different quantum tools. And the is here, uh, the ASEA water is one of it. Um, in saying that, um, the resonance, Dr. Dr. Nassim once, um, if anybody of y'all know Dr. Nassim Harimin, he says, if we are able to generate a high level of coherence in a structure of water that is source of life, it says that it becomes a medium um, in communicating with our brain and body in biological level. And I find that that water had that resonance. That's me, all right? So I find that there's a communication that's happening whenever we consume the water and there is some sort of information going from brain level and, us in, and that's being transmitted um, in cellular level into your body. So it's from physical body to vital body. I love when I look at things like that because I experiment them and I love experimenting things. So that's not the only tool. I got so many tools, but that's how I connected to Daniel uh, with the CR. And when you're talking about geometry, um, everything in the universe is geometrical. Everything is maths. We know maths from school days, like actual calculation one plus one is two, but the actual mathematical of the universe is the geometry. It's all numbers, it's all patterns, it's all shapes, and that's how we are designed. We are kind of in a neuro, neuro, numerical, numerical digit, digit kind of a space that we are in, that we, we come in connection with one another because of that. Even though you are in UK and Daniel is in America, there's a geometrical connection. <laughs> I can see a tectohedron, a beautiful triangle formation in that, yeah? So, that is that is that is the uh, um, the uniqueness that I find about individual. Everybody has got their personality. Everybody is holding a geometrical sequence in them. So my job has always been finding their true self because the geometry in communication with me is giving me the identity about the person who they are meant to be, not who they are at the moment. Right. So it becomes very interesting for me to bring them, pull out the core, and tell them who they really are, who they are meant to be. Somehow or other, after the sessions, people tend to feel that opening, unfolding happen, happens within themselves. And things start changing mentally, their mental body changes as well. So they find that they're connecting to something else. And then there is a, a sequence that starts happening. That is what I meant by decoding the geometry. So when we decode into the geometry, they tend to open up about themselves and have a better understanding about themselves. So when you ladies had the sessions with me, I think basically that's all I did. Your geometry was in communication with me and I just opened it up and um, we were in communication with your geometry. It's not that um, you got to tell me anything. It was just that I picked up everything from the communication because of the unfolding of the fractals because a geometry is a solid, complete formation, just like a platonic solid. But when I see fractals, it has to be an experience from the past that they left behind. 
but there are fractals from your future that's not aligning with your future that means something is not playing around something is not connecting something is being um some you know sometimes people have to uh kind of um laid back staying in their hip tonight hip uh, hypnotized pattern uh, you know they're kind of hypnotized in certain level and they stay in that pattern don't know how to move forward so it's very when i when i see something like that it's like okay so this is what needs to be done to unlock it so they can move forward so if i go into the topic i can speak for hours and hours <laughs> it wouldn't stop that. <laughs> now you've said so many important things there and I, I can see danielle's picked off on loads of that as well at the moment i'm always been very careful what i say because of the platform that this is on but over the last few years um and you mentioned the lockdown danielle and how it tra had transformed the way you work over the last few years so many people have had this sort of awakening that things are not as they thought they were that they were, um, you know, living in a world controlled by things that they didn't like, that they wanted to make changing. And one of the things that you picked up on then, um, Namala, is about the importance of breaking past, of letting go of what isn't serving you anymore and old patterns and beliefs and things that are holding you back and to help you move forward into your soul heart purpose. And so many people, are looking for this and the and and help of how they do that i mean danielle you've had personal experience of that haven't you oh yeah when i started meeting with nirmala like well she had this she just said it beautifully and i've never heard her actually articulate it in the way that she did but the like when i met with her she knew everything it was like i didn't have to say a word she knew like the patterns that were playing out in my life with family, with friends, with work, with just my own awareness of myself. And she felt where I was going. And it's not like she's, you know, she said, well, you're going to be doing X, Y, and Z, but she's sort of like indicated some, some pieces. And she took me through a meditation where I could see things too. And what was amazing was at the end of the meditation, she started talking about all the things that, that we saw together. And I thought, how in the world did she witness the things that I witnessed in my own head? <laughs> you know? I just, it, it has consistently intrigued me about what this is and how the sacred geometry works. And I, I didn't understand what it was, but when she started to explain to me every, you know, every chakra, I think we've all heard about that, but they each have their unique geometry and how she sees it, where things are, are just stuck. They're not flowing and rotating. And she kind of just is able to come in and, and see that and start moving it. And, you know, I'll never forget, we were laughing about it the other day, you know, she said to me that there was a man that was going to be coming into my life and had to do with yoga and this and that. And I said, the only person that fits that description is a guy that's been a friend of mine for three years, Ramala. And I said, we're very much in the friend space. <laughs> you know, I said, that's not changing. That was a clear conversation at the beginning three years ago. Like, that's where we're at. And she just smiled. And she's like, no, <laughs> there's something here and uh i think what was it two weeks later normala i get a phone call you know from him he's coming out to visit and he says you know things have changed for me danielle and i think we could build a beautiful life together and i thought how did she know that <laughs> you know and uh stepping into that space it was like you know i then moved which i never thought i would move away from colorado i moved back to florida and then got here and all these beautiful things started opening up with with work and with myself and it's been it's been interesting, you know, and she's kind of helped me also because with that transition, there's so many pieces, old patterns that are coming to play that like, OK, it's time to cut those out. It's time to move forward. It's time to now we were just talking about, well, now it's time to to write how you want things, you know, in the future and you get to decide that now. And I think I, there's no one else I've met. You know, I've done a lot of different well, therapies and connecting with people. I, I don't even know how to name what it is that Nirmala does. <laughs> you know, She's not a coach. She's not a psychic. She's not any of these things, but she just has a beautiful ability to see the essence of who you are and help you connect in with it. Uh, and to be in that space is just, it's so powerful. Um, I mean, she's helped me with my work. She's helped me navigate family. She's helped me navigate my personal life. It's just, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you. Um, I think that that abilities that you're talking about, everybody has it. That's the reason I'm so consciously writing this program that I want to finish. As I'm saying, I'm finishing it. 
I hope to finish it by end of this month. And that program is, is, is a design for people who want to learn about geometry and how geometry can influence them and how they can move forward using a geometry as an alignment. Understanding geometry, it's like the minute they know that they know which geometry is their function, um, is their abilities and how they can, just like how I'm viewing somebody sitting opposite to me, they'll be able to understand um, the tool and the trait that they have within themselves. It's just about unfolding and opening up yourself. And I find that everybody, every being is beautiful, especially after the COVID. It was amazing. I know that it was, I'm not meant to say amazing, but it was an amazing time during the COVID. Um, so much of self-awareness, self-consciousness. People were moving from, you know, what they were, the patent behavior to something very different. You know, everybody was trying to find themselves. It was, it became an exciting time. And um, I met so many people, you know, so many people from medical ground as well coming, um, coming into sessions with me. And so it was, an, it was a very exciting time. And that was kind of a transition. The earth and the humans were going together. All right. But I know that everybody pictured it very much in a very fearful way um, because fear and love, I think, is, um, is a resonance that stays together, that orbits together. The choice a lot of people made it was with fear. There was some made the choice of going with the love. Yeah. So it was a transitioning time for Earth and humans. And I, and I felt that um, that combination and the way that it was coordinated was so beautiful that everybody flowed together. That's the reason our Earth resonance heartbeat and uh, the Earth heartbeat and the human heartbeat are in a similar sequence at the moment, geometrically. All right. We have never ever seen resonance to that flow um, in maybe in, I don't know, eighty years, ninety years, hundred years. I don't know, but um, that's what um, I was told. The resonance of the Earth heartbeat and human heartbeat is so uh, much in balance now. So we went through that, through that, and we are still going through that for a purpose. And I think it's all about the awakening, about understanding yourself not rushing into life, um, you know, competing and going into the survival mode and struggling, but to understand yourself, stay back and witness and go into the flow of the flower of the seed of life, you know, going into the, the you know, um, understanding that everything is unfolding as you step into it. Just go without fear with love, you know. So, so much of awakening has happened and I was um, amazed. Um, at that very point, I was also doing my PhD, and my all my case studies was based on the COVID situation. And I'm just going um, to just yeah. sorry, interrupt one minute. We mustn't use that word anymore, otherwise the video will get flagged. Oh, sorry. Okay, no, that's fine. We if we just sort of say the situation of the last two years moving forward, because otherwise the algorithms take the video down so we'll just we'll just oh, okay just for the benefit the listeners sort of know we always have to talk in code but if you use oh. that particular word too much then um it won't be aired <laughs> so they'll take right. it yeah. which okay says so a lot, I, doesn't it namala which says a lot yeah 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 mm. so yeah i didn't really that stop okay so <laughs> sorry so, uh, flowing with the information, I, I I think there's a lot of awakening has happened within the few years um, with humanity and um, um, new things are happening, new things are unfolding around the world as well. So um, we all are in the right place at the right time. A lot of quantum tools um, like ASEA and um, a lot of quantum tools are being accessed and people are jumping into it. You know, they're understanding there's something um, known as the natural remedy before um, um, you know moving into anything that is um, that is very much um, complicated let's put it that way then using something that's very complicated is a easy word to use <laughs> yeah. and it's been it's so wonderful isn't it about how everyone's going through their own unique journey at this but then we're all linked at the quantum level as well and the yeah. consciousness is definitely shifting massively i mean we've seen so much happen just over the last few weeks on a global scale but what i'm more delighted about is on an individual scale like you were just both mentioning to see the questions that people are now asking themselves to see the fact that people are realizing so much so about how much control they have over their future and their reality how does that link into the work that you do when you you open it up for people in the mala because the great thing I love about the way you work I mean I've had a session and about to have another one with the mala that 
the, the beautiful thing is, is it doesn't matter where people have come from or where they're at now, does it? No, it doesn't matter. Yeah, everybody's finding their sovereign self, their true self, and uh, everybody is um, um, has gone through the experience of a patent experience of their parents, grandparents, and, you know, keep going. And then they're bringing in all these experiences theirs. And then now they're dropping it and saying, no, I want to be in my sovereign self. Who is who am I in my identity? Yeah. And then they are going into the actual um, template, the original template. So I find that humans are looking for their own original template so they can start beginning their life in a very much sovereign way. Yeah. It's so important, isn't it? Because when people step into who they are as an individual and stop trying to be some thing that they think they're meant to be or the expectations that someone else from their past has had on them or that they've placed on themselves it is literally like you described Namana like an opening up of a flower and and all the bits of their life start to fall into place don't they yeah yeah it's it's just like the um in the geometry we use a lot of flower of life the flower of life starts with the seed of life yeah so the seed of life is like every templates that you have been is is within the seed of life yeah so you're making a choice over that so so when you look at the flowers they are geometrically aligned they don't go against nature they don't do anything they don't they, in fact their options are very clear and straightforward but mm -hmm. humans complicate it mm -hmm. we as humans we complicate it all the time because um, we, we take a path and then we get confused or we look at someone and we, we, we try to template ourselves as them, which is not possible. You are an individual by yourself and you have a beautiful space within yourself that you need to bring, it, bring that out from your heart. You cannot expect to be somebody else because then you're going to duplicate yourself. And that's how our DNA has been duplicated so many times that, you know, the 12 strands are missing. Uh, I wouldn't say not missing, it's been duplicated, it's kind of manipulated so many times. So when you're really looking at that, every individual has their uniqueness. And I get excited when somebody comes in front of me because the beauty of them, the, you know, I, I'm fascinated by what they can do and what they are able to do. And it makes me excited because now I'm going to show them how to do that. Whether they're going to pick it up and is up to them end of the day. But my excitement is always bringing them forward and showing them who they really are, what they can do, what they're able to do. There are people who came to me and said, no, I cannot close my eyes. I cannot be silent. I cannot meditate. Right. I've, I've kind of silent, silenced them and then brought them into a space where they have never been before. It's not because they cannot do it. It's because they believe in the physical, the mental body, our our, our consciousness covered with five bodies, right? So it's like our physical body, mental body, vital body, a supramental body, and spiritual body. We are, we are the consciousness. We are the holder of the full five bodies of consciousness. Yeah. Everybody try to work from physical level, ignoring the other bodies, which is not going to be possible. You have to align with all the other bodies to come to the completeness. The minute you align with it, everything comes from the universe downwards. You are able to unfold anything at any time. It's just about training yourself. In the ancient time, that's how they worked. In the ancient time, that's the way they did everything. They brought everything from universal level and then they opened it up to the earth level. But we are still in training, we are still learning and we came here for our experience. Anything, any challenges that comes to humans um, is not because they have to suffer or they so call it as the, they have to struggle. This is part of their, you know, they will use the word karma, that this is karma. Karma can be beautiful. Karma is beautiful. The challenge is given to you basically because you are capable of that challenge. That's how I always see it. If not, no challenge is going to go and drop in front of you. Yeah, well, challenges are given to you for that purpose. I have a question. So if in ancient times we were more connected like what has happened that's made us lose this connection a lot of things daniel <laughs> simple question <laughs> a lot of things has happened from ancient times yeah in ancient times there was no discrimination there's no difference there was so many things that was um happening and everything was sharing and you know everything was um nothing was not many things were divided yeah there was there was 
wars and stuff like that but as not not as bad but in ancient time people learn to live in the divine cosmos consciousness right they love to live in the consciousness being together and learning from each other trying to find out what is the when a child is born in ancient times it's like what intelligent this child is going to bring to earth is how mm. important that was right nowadays it's different when child is born you know which which you know they already got an idol you know i'm going to make my child into that idol is you know it's completely different so in ancient time things were so different the way humans treating each other was different um there was there's not that many discrimination that we have in the world right now in ancient time we didn't even see it nobody will see it they respect you for who the light being you are because they they completely look at you in a light level they didn't look at you as a physical level right they were interested what this light is bringing because i'm light and you are light what we are going to exchange with each other right but then we tend as time went by we we i think you know we we changed and we kind of um became very protective we went into a survival mode and then everything became so physical that everything was looked at and um, um, observed from a physical level about a person, about the human. You see, so um, in every in every way, in every direction you can think of. So that's when everything started dropping. Okay, um, yeah. It's a it's a huge topic again when we go into inshallah. Oh, <laughs> I can I can keep going with uh, how many list of things that has changed that is not meant to have changed. You know um so there was no male or female they looked at everything very much in the same resonance okay so they find that the female and male they never ever um um how would i say not really discriminate they never look at um look at it differently you know mm -hmm. they looked at everything in a light right so the, the two the two beings came together for a process for a, for a reason so there was no male or female the the male had a lot of feminine in it and they understood that and the female had a lot of masculine in it and they understood that so they used that intelligence appropriately how to use it to ma uh, to manifest it into a beautiful creation rather than how things are being looked at nowadays yeah so yeah there's a lot of things in ancient times that i would say that if we go back and we look at it the respect the the uh, the idea that we had the way we we did things was so different everything was a flu Mm -hmm. um yeah there was no difference but things does change as people became innovative there was competitions and then the king and queen came and then you know who's in charge came and who's supposed to take you know and then the we we became even very you know we went to the next stage where um there's colony and then you know there was war and everything so we were, we humans were completely, became a complex situation. We were in a very complex situation that we have to follow a protocol. We have to fit into that box and we have to be part of it to be recognized. And, and that's how it became in the last, what, 100 years, 200 years, I would say. Um, so we became deeper and deeper. So during that situation, when there's a collapse, then the new learning starts. I think we are we are kind of in our new learning now, understanding who we really are. Yeah. And I can bring up the twelve strands of DNA, right. and is this something that is part of the sacred geometry that you see that you work with? Because there's so many conversations at the moment about you know you've got the traditional scientists who call it junk DNA, which we all know is <laughs> is rubbish, or anyone watching this show knows it's rubbish, but. And then you've got other people that are talking about part of the great awakening is the activation um, back of to the 12 strands of DNA. Is that something that you've got any knowledge about, Namala? Um, the 12 strands of DNA, I wouldn't say I'm expert in it, but um, in geometrical sense, that's a complete, that is a complete package, the 12 DNA, the 12 templates, right? So our originality that as a human, we started with the 12 templates, the 12 DNA, yeah? And then um, the 12 DNA has got the, um, they had everything. It's just like when you're looking at 12 different shapes, each shape had, had their, um, has their um, uh, personality, character, and intelligence. And that's how we are connected. So all 12 came together 
to evolve as one as collective consciousness yeah so that is how far i would understand it um someone would be might be an expert in, in explaining that so that dna just imagine it is clear it's crystal clear all right our consciousness can't be interrupted within that dna right so came in for a mission and it's very clear to um, uh, activate or or to completely transmit that mission and to rem and to pass it on um, and um, talking about the 12 templates it's like we are we are no different to that because the 12 templates came from a very higher level it's a very much light energy information that we all hold yeah like the um, the secret geometry for me is from six dimension onwards the communication of a secret geometry is six dimension onwards so when we are looking at it there's so many people so many children that i can see they're holding such um, a beautiful light within themselves if parents understood that um, they would can they can keep them within that space of that organic self of that child and understand that child so that they don't have to uh, you know compete against what is known as the normal or the norm yeah they can be normal as they are you know they coming with them um, i've seen a few children who have came with organic self in the sense like they are able to do a lot of things that we we might think that is um, not possible um mm -hmm. so that's a bit complex again and that's <laughs> Yeah, if I go into that, it's going to be complicated. But with the 12 templates, that's how far I can go and how, how much I know about it. For me, it's, it's the whole. The 12 templates are the whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, We have been manipulated in every way as uh, from our bodies of consciousness. So we are kind of saturated in every level. Um, that's the reason we, um, we when we want to look at something or we want to think of something, we have so many layers we need to remove to actually look at it in a very original way. All right, so that's the reason we have so much of judgments. Uh, we look at it in a, in a very different angle to somebody else. We cannot look at things as perfect as it is. Everything has to come with the space of judgment. Um, and the judgment has to be removed. With the 12 templates, there's no judgment. There's no, there's, there won't be any relevance to judgments at all. There's no relevance to, um, not knowing what is right in front of you, you can be as you are, and they accept you, and they, um, they, they will, they will. How would I say? They, it's, they will look at you as you're a divine space. That's how they will look at you because everything is a learning for them. Mm. Yeah. Wow. It might be a very, very wide. I think wide um, topic when we're talking about the twelve templates, and I'm not the expert in it, as I said. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, this is so relevant to uh, the questions that a lot of people are asking themselves at the moment, both at a global scale and at an individual scale. And I think one of the main things that people are really asking about is how do they tap in and tune in with their soul and heart purpose? Mm -hmm. Well, I think um, it's first of all, I think, um, that understanding the five consciousness that they're holding the bodies of consciousness that they're just not on a physical level that they're not there shouldn't be any hierarchy they have to understand that they are they are no they are not here or they're not here right they are in the balance that means we are all coming together as one as a collective consciousness right we cannot separate ourselves from one to the other so the other thing is that um um they have to go within everyone if they can go within and find out the source of who they really are and they step out as that without in the space of no judgment in complete oneness being in that space of the cosmic source i think they'll be able to understand what is their journey is all about why they are here and how they're going to be the service to humanity so uh, to answer your question i think um again it's 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 a lot of layers needs to be removed that means they have to understand whether they are in a pattern experience that they're repeating something again and again or they are in a learning experience whether they can let go of the past and start walking through the path as if they're seeing a light right in front of them so when they are when they can go into that observation what happens is all they want is to walk through the path without being pulled backwards that means 
There are times they can take two steps back, but then they take 10 steps forward after that. That means nothing is stopping me. I'm going to go with the flow. I'm going to walk right in front. They need to start decoding and unfolding themselves. Yeah. And I know there are a lot of practitioners out there would be able to help them as well. Um, one part of my workshop that I'm going to start that um, is, is going to explain how they're going to do that. There are tools that I'm going to provide in that workshop, um, teaching them how to geometrically align themselves so that they can help themselves and help others. Yeah. So um, we all are here as a collective consciousness, like you, Catherine and Daniel, you all are, you know, you all are doing a great job at the moment. There's no necessity that you have to sit down and do this, but you are, you chose to do it. It's a choice that they make in life. All right. If somebody come in front of me saying, I don't have a choice, I wouldn't agree with it. Everybody has got, has, has got a choice in life. You know, it's what decision you're making at that very point is what's going to really determine who you're really going to be. You know, you can give an excuse that you've got no choice and stay in that space. I'm not blaming, I'm not saying it's wrong, but the things that's your journey, then you have to accept that journey. You shouldn't be complaining about that journey. Well, there's so many patterns, I think, that get, I mean, I know it, it's like a magnet, these patterns that are in us, it's just like, all of a sudden, we're back where we were, and we're like, how did we get here again? So, I mean, do you have advice for people? Is it meditation? I mean, what if, do you feel that it's necessary sometimes to have a third party to support you in kind of helping you get out of the pattern and move into a new space? Every individual is different, um, so um, and every source of their geometry is different. That's the reason for me. I align with with individuals geometrically. So if I look at their geometry, I know that certain hertz of sound is going to work on them, right? For some people, I spend a lot of time chatting with them because I'll try to get the layers and layers and get to the core until they come out and tell me, all right. So I think this is the issue. Some of them know where the core problem is, but they don't want to voice up. It's like they sweep it under the carpet. They just want to leave it there. And then they want to look at the overall picture because they want to bypass it without touching that problem. All right. Because they say they don't want to look at the problem. It's not going to work because emotionally you're still tied with the problem. Even though you're walking past it and you're thinking that you're doing everything well, you, you, at times you can feel that you are not sleeping well. You can see that um, you are not engaging with things very well. You can see sudden anxiety. You know, some people have regular nightmares. It's because of the conditioning that you have done to yourself. I'm not going to look at this problem. It's too, I can understand for, I, I have dealt with people with traumas and all that. And I can understand how they feel. They don't want to touch that part of it. But sometimes um, there's a way around it as well, how they can actually let it go even without going into that space. So seeing a right practitioner, trying to understand who they really are is what is important. The minute they understand that, it's easily they'll let it go as if that happened in their past life. Sometimes I have to do that. Like as if that incident didn't happen in this lifetime, it happened in, that, it happened in a past life. So I tell, tell them to let it go because the, now is the new beginning. Mm -hmm. And they'll just follow me like a little child in that session. <laughs> they'll just follow me like a little child and then they'll accept it. Because I, I have to bring them to a certain age, certain term, certain conditioning in that, in that space for them to accept and trust themselves. Mm -hmm. Children are the easiest. You can influence, you can trust them. They'll trust anything at that, at that point. You can't bring a 40 year old and do the 40 year old to let go. It's going to be impossible. So depending on individual, um, meditation is definitely relevant. I will never say no to it. Even if you can't meditate, just plugging on to a beautiful uh, music from nature or, you know, a, a beautiful 432, 582, 80, um, 5, uh, 582, 587 hertz, um, you know, um, going into that geometrical sequence and just listening to a music for for at least 10 minutes that's possible the minute you do that sound got a great effect in our body geometrically it influenced the brain it settles things so even when person is angry don't ever you know don't even think of um trying to resolve a situation when you're angry move away from the situation sit down for a second listen to some music that you really like and then walk into the problem after that yeah 
That's so good advice. I, I could I need to keep remembering. <laughs> I'm getting much better as I get older. One question I really wanted to ask both of you, um, both your opinions on this, please, is a lot of people, obviously, we are surrounded by people that have their perception of who we are. And as we take on a lot of these tools and techniques, we change into our more authentic self of where we're meant to be right here, right now. But if you're surrounded by people that are still putting you in the pigeonhole of how they see you, do you find that can hold people back and any advice on that? Do you want me to answer that, Danielle? <laughs> <laughs> you want to give it a try? <laughs> <laughs> you can go first. I'm going to process what I think. <laughs> Okay, all right. So um, that is because you are allowing that. All right, nobody can stop us. Nobody can make us angry. It's we allowing that space to, that means we walk into their space. They are creating a space and that space has got a huge dark hole. And there they're saying, I'm welcoming you in. This is what I'm going to do, do to you. You come in and drop inside, yeah? And what, you, what we do, we run inside and we drop into the hole. And then we complain, why is this person doing this to us, right? So the best way to deal with things like that is always, always resonate from, from a higher self, at least, at least trying to pretend like it's not your game, it's not your problem, it's not your issue. So one way of doing it, stepping out away as if you're looking at yourself, witnessing yourself with the other party on the opposite side, right? So witnessing and then looking at the whole situation and saying, how is this person is now as to have to react as if you're looking at a third party all right so you always when you're angry it's best to create a scenario step away in a very silent space and witness yourself as a third party how this person is now supposed to react all right i know some some clients do ask when you're angry you're going to just do it then then we got no time to step out and step in and that means you are not in self-awareness that means you're not consciously aware so you need more training on that so to do that you have to go into silence of meditating regularly to walk into that space yeah so anyone i mean um when we're driving a car we get that all the time somebody just come through you know and then you have to put a sudden break and then the second one sudden break how many times you're going to do it the first time you say no i'm calm <laughs> second time you say i'm calm the third time you know wind down the window <laughs> you know you can do all these things but before you do that who are you telling off are you telling them off do you think they're even listening or you're telling yourself off who is now agitators that means who won the game the person who drove past won the game all right so if you are going to be calm and relaxed, allow everybody to be in their journey. Nothing is going to disturb you. To do that, you have to be consciously meditating. You have to be consciously be aware of yourself. The thoughts process, you know, the thoughts says hundred things. When you're only, you, when you're supposed to only re remember two things, it will make up hundred things. When you're angry, it's only that tiny, but it will make a huge story about you as if the future has already happened, that's how the disaster is. You know, it creates a story about you. So before the mental body creates such a story, you stop it then. Mm -hmm. I'm angry, I don't have to hear to you right now. What you're gonna give me is not going to be relevant. That is what I meant by self-awareness and consciousness. Yeah, so it all comes from practice. We have to practice in meditation every day to be consciously aware of our thought process. That's the most important reason people have to meditate. You know, so you are completely in control when it comes to anger, frustration, sadness, grief, anything. Meditation really helps if you keep practicing it. Yeah. Well, to add to that, Danielle. Well, I, I was coming back to what you were asking about how people in your world can kind of pull you back into how you used to be. Um, I've been, you know, the last 10 years of my life have been a journey of going, wow, all this stuff that I thought was real and who I thought I really was, is not true at all. <laughs> and the truth is, you know, a lot of people started to fall away because they just didn't, I don't know, wouldn't resonate on the same level anymore. And not that one is better or anything else. I think we're all on our own journeys, but um, you know, I've, I've had a challenge with family because like you can't just like fall away from family is how I felt. Um, 
And what I've realized is like, well, these people that are in my life, it's almost like they're my best teacher because if they're pulling me back into this space, it's like, it's a moment for me to practice what it is that I know, what Normal is talking about, to step out of the situation and go, well, wait, no, you know, how do I want to show up in this space? I know how I used to show up in this space, but how do I want to show up? And, you know, when we, when we get pulled into those spaces, we also, we can choose, you know, we can set a boundary and that's something I've had to learn to do. And I'm getting better and better at it, of voicing, you know, this is what, this is not going to be what's best for me personally on my journey and allowing myself to say, no, I'm going to put me first <laughs> rather than, you know, showing up in the way I used to and pleasing others and keeping the, a nice space over here. I'm going to just choose, this is what I need and, and trust that it'll all fall, you know, how it's supposed to with them, but it can be difficult. But I think those, those challenges are the moments that we get to practice what we're learning. <laughs> and I think that's a beautiful thing. It's like, and also changing your perspective and rather than getting agitated that like, why aren't they seeing this? It's like, oh, what are they teaching me? Or, you know, how can I maybe help them also perceive things a little bit differently? Um, not that, you know, it's our job to, but I think when we change, at least what I've learned is that as I've shifted myself, if I've had these awarenesses, like I've watched it shift the people around me, my family, my close friends, I've seen them shift too. Uh, and sometimes they're not even aware of it. You know, I don't know that they're consciously aware, but um, you know, if you walk into a situation, say you have to go to, you know, a space where you're hanging out, you don't have to, as Normala said, you're choosing to go into the hole, but <laughs> you're, you're consciously making the choice to go in. You know, I think a high vibration, it kind of blows out these lower vibrations. So, so if you go in strong and the high energy and saying that this is where you're going to bring everybody to in that space, you can shift the space without even having to say much. Uh, so those are my thoughts on it, Kathy. Yeah, it's nicely. Very good job, Daniel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always laugh because people who enter self-development, you know, we've got to laugh at ourselves a bit first. Having a sense of humour, I think, is really, really important as being a human. But the way I also would just add to that is, like, we can't have it both ways. If you're the type of person that believes that we create our own reality mm -hmm. and then everything is created, it, everything is connected, then we can't pick and choose when we create our own reality. We create... <laughs> all of our reality so therefore if we're surrounded by people that we perceive are doing something to us we have to accept ownership for that as well and I agree with you it's it's one of our greatest lessons to practice these new tools and techniques and <laughs> to be aware about what's working for us and what is not so successful so it's those conscious choices again and it is fun just learn, you know you've got to You've got to be in that learning mindset, haven't you? You've got to be open to learning, to having an open mind, to listening to the feedback that everything in the universe is giving you and taking that on board. Well, I think yeah. it's beautiful too. Like it, it, so saying like we create everything, right? Because I am 100% in the camp of it's all inside and that creates the outside. So if something's showing up, like your results to me, it's a clear indication of maybe a subconscious belief that you didn't realize you had. And so everything happening in life, it's for you. And it's for you to go, okay, well, why am I allowing that to happen? Or what belief is allowing that to show up? Because that, that's your work now. Now you go, oh, okay, thank you for the awareness. <laughs> and now that, I, that is what you can go in and work on. And um, if you look at it with that lens, like you don't really get frustrated by things. You know, you have to keep reminding yourself. And sometimes that's why Normal has been amazing in my life, pulling me back to, okay, <laughs> you know, well, what is this space and how can you navigate through it um, and move into your, your truest, highest self in all of these situations? Yeah, the experience is our knowledge. The experience is our knowledge. Without experience, without frustration, you're not going to move forward. When you're getting angry and you're getting frustrated, it means you it's about time for you to make a change that's that's the alarm that's the, that's the red button you're pressing that's what your body is telling that's what your mind is saying but we tend to react in the same flow again and again saying the same thing again and again it's not going to work yeah so when you're angry and you're frustrated step back what is the learning the person right in front is the trigger point because it's, it's fantastic how um daniel phrase it teacher i always use that phrase you know everyone who comes in your life you know people come the clients come in front talking about their ex ex-husband ex-wife and, and everyone i say they are great teachers for them you know mm -hmm. that's the reason you move forward in your life and look at yourself that journey had to happen in that manner 
for you to become this person right now. So you made a choice in your life. So that was the pool, right? It's no point being in a relationship or in a friendship or any kind of um, um, in engaged in, in any kind of, um, you know, even in a career or, you know, between your bosses and staff or whatever it is, you don't have to hold on to something for that long period of time, being frustrated, standing in the same spot. That experience is telling you that there's something bigger is waiting for you. The door is open, but you are not pushing through. And that's the reason it's kind of shaking wherever you are. The whole environment, the, the energy is shaking around you for that reason. Sometimes we need to be aware of that. We have to understand that. That's the purpose. Yeah? Yeah. When there's challenges, there's excitement. That's how I look at it. Right. Oh, I've loved this conversation today, ladies. Absolutely loved it. I really hope I can persuade you both to come back to follow up because there's so many more amazing areas to talk about. Now, Namala and Danielle's information will all be in the comments box below the video. So below every video on YouTube, I know some people find it hard to find, there's a little down arrow and then you can find all the contact information for these two wonderful ladies. Um, Namala, I'm so excited about your new workshop. I will be the first one to sign up for that. So please let me know <laughs> when it's on. Yeah. Um, and thank yeah. you so much. Thank you for inviting me into this um, um, podcast. And I um, really enjoyed working with you girls, really. Yeah. You all are amazing. You all are doing amazing work. And I know there's going to be another amazing uh, stage you both are going to flow through as well. Yeah. <laughs> and you all are completely aware of that. That's my geometrical space that I'm looking at, both of you. It's looking wonderful. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, Thank you so call. much, Mamala. Thank you so much, Danielle. These connections, when you say yes to opportunities, these beautiful connections present themselves. So I really hope everyone, thank you so much for everyone who's watching this. And I hope that you can all identify from today an opportunity, as Namala said, you know, those, those friction points in your life, those challenges are you all saying, yes, there's something more for me here. So accept that and step into it and just watch the beauty that unfolds. And we will be back for more of these talks. So thank you everyone for watching and we shall be back soon. Bye. <laughs>